Yes. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Fitzgerald's Garden of Goodies, where we're in the sunroom. So bright in here. I decided to wear a hat today. Mm-hmm. So what are we here to talk about today? Hold up. Where is my manners? Listen, if you are new to my channel, if this is your first time joining me, welcome and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time to take a look at what I have to offer. I just try to inspire you to do the same thing too. And that's grow. Okay? So if you like what you see, click the thumbs up. Click the bell after you've subscribed. And you'll get notifications every time I drop a video. Okay? All right. So welcome. And if you're already a subscriber, you know how I do. I celebrate you. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, hey, thank you for being a subscriber. You rock. So let's get to it. We are talking about companion planning today. Mm -hmm. It's the cousin of crop rotation. If you checked out that other video, you would know I already um, introduced that I'm going to be talking about companion planning soon. So it's time to get with it. I like to share because sharing is caring and I care. All right. So these are just tips that I like to do that I like to share with you. All right. So what is companion planting? I hear you. What is companion planting? Companion planting is planting other plants um, to use for, it's for beneficial benefits to ward off other unwanted pests, okay? Unwanted, just eeky, eeky, eekies that will nibble at your food. You know what I'm saying? That will just chomp your whole crop away. So what you're going to do you're going to plant something with them, with your beans, with your lettuce, with your cabbage. You know, you're going to mix it up. You're going to plant some friendly plants and some strategic other vegetables to help get a bigger yield, have um, less disease and pest infestations, and um, it keeps you from using harmful pesticides. You're going to eat this food that you're growing, I'm sure. Right? All right. So let's try to do it the natural way. Let's grow a plant or a flower or an herb that, um, that complements your crop that you are, the desired crop that you're looking to get. Okay? All right. So what... Um, a few tips that I would like to talk about with companion crop are ways to use them in your garden, all right? There's the first tip I would like to talk about. That is... Uh-huh. Trap crops. Trap crops is a way of companion planting. Your trap crop, okay, is also, you can also call it a sacrificial crop, right? So say you plant um, nasturtiums with cabbage. Um, they draw aphids or what's good, let's see. Aphids, aphids attack just about everything. So nasturtiums draw aphids to them. So you would plant your trap crop at least two weeks before you're going to plant your desired crop. So get your trap crop in the ground first. Then two weeks so it can get in there and start trapping what you don't want. Also a trap crop, I'm sorry, a trap crop 
is a crop that draws away from the desired crop. It'll take, it'll, if the aphids will bring, come over here instead of over there. All right. Um, another example of a good trap crop is that blue Hubbard squash. And check this out, right? They, they attract bush beetles. So what about if they survive, right? Whatever you're growing that is attracted to the bush beetles, they coming over here to the, to the blue Hubbard squash. Check it. If the blue Hubbard squash makes it, that's a bonus crop. You got whatever you were growing over here, boom, not harm, beautiful. Then boom, you got this blue Hubbard squash to harvest, right? So you got a twofer, right? Twofer with the trap crop. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about companion planting. Plant a trap crop. They draw away the threat to the desired crop that you want to survive, all right? Remember trap crop. planting, but we're moving on because guess, guess what? You got your trap crop. Now, what if you, you, you want to repel them? You want to repel unwanted insects, right? Or, or pests. Guess what? They also have things you can plant that repel pests. Your herbs, your aromatic flowers. Think about it. Plant tomato and basil. Basil helps fight off hornworms. Plant them together. That is companion planting. Ah, I'm dropping that knowledge. <laughs> Listen, I'm sharing because I care. Bam. So plant them together. Guess what? Orange and sternum, aphids love them. You got Brussels sprouts growing? Plant orange and sternums with them. Together, they make that dynamic duo team. Okay? That's called companion planting. So, plant them together, just like your brassicas. Plant orange and sternums with them. Because they aphids do attack them, <laughs> seem like the most. So, plant those orange and sternums. Let me tell you, you can plant dill. You can plant uh, thyme. You can plant rosemary. You can plant sage. Oh, chamomile. Chamomile also helps repel unwanted pests. Chamomile. So remember your herbs, your aromatics, things that really smell beautifully. Lavender. Those keep those pests away, okay? Let's talk about marigolds. Booyah. Marigolds. Marigolds are wonderful. They also add beauty to your garden. Who doesn't want to look out at their garden and see it looking all beautiful and with all its beautiful colors and providing food for you and your family? <laughs> and seeds. We can't forget those seeds. So listen. These are root nematodes. I, I plant pot marigolds because they are pretty. They also have medicinal use. The French marigolds and the African marigolds produce a toxic chemical that root off nematodes. They fight off nematodes. What you're looking at, these are nematodes. They destroy the affected plant. So you should kind of choose a resistant variety. Keep your soil exposed to the sun. Add some aged manure. You can also disinfect your gardening tools. I told y'all about that. Disinfect your gardening tools. Also in the fall, till your soil. Till your soil. Practice crop rotation. 
See, the first video I told y'all about crop rotation, this will prevent crop rotation. These are worms. These are just like worms that affect ill. They are microscopic worms that feed on the roots of the plant. And look how that looks. That's gross. You don't want to do that. So marigolds, they fight that off. Okay? So that is companion planting. Planting, companion planting with something else. Companion. Two. Two or more. Moving on. Third type of companion planting is attraction. Attracting. 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 Attracting a pollinators. You can also plant flowers that attract pollinators. Oh my gosh. You want the bees. You want them. You want the butterflies. You want the hummingbirds. What can you grow together, companion planting, that will attract them? Hmm, Sheba. Hmm. What can we grow? We can grow chives. We can grow cilantro. Mm -hmm. Ladybugs. You can grow things that attract ladybugs because ladybugs eat aphids. All right, aphids. They are, you know, not good. They will eat up everything. Grow companion plants to either attract aphids away, like nasturtiums, or repel them outright. That's basil, rosemary, strong scented plants. Okay? So, attraction. So, those are the things you want to plant to attract these, you know, or repel them. You know, like I say, either attraction or repel. These aphids, this is another. They will look like this, too. I hope you can see that. This is what aphids look like. This is what aphids look like. Let's see. I'm sorry. There we go. This is a long video, but it's companion planting, and you got to talk a lot about companion planting. And I just wanted you to see. This is what they look like. So you don't want these on your plants so that if you see them, you can recognize them. You'll say, hey, Sheba showed me that. I sure did. And told you about them, how you can plant things to attract them away from your desired crop. In crop, what it does, it attracts good predators like ladybugs, uh, um, ladybirds, beetles, uh, lace wings. Yeah, I'm going to read some that I see here. Some spiders, uh, robe flies, yeah, just predatory mites, hoverflies, ladybugs. Listen, plant things that attract them, like ladybugs eat aphids. Um, so an example is... Um, Caraway, chives, cosmo, and cilantro, fennel. They attack predatory insects. So these are great, and they attract bees. We need the bees to pollinate our food, to grow, to pollinate, okay? Come closer. This is what I want to say in the end. As I close on this companion planting video. I know it's long. I know that. So let me close with this. I am giving you this information because I want you to create a polyculture in your garden. If you have other plants in your garden that match up or companion or are companion 
with another plant that could possibly repel something or draw away from your desired crop, go ahead, plant it. Plant it. It confuses unwanted pests. Listen to me again now. Plant the, uh, plant the crop so that it can confuse the unwanted pest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's called companion planting. All right? So, take it from me. Um, it works. I can, I, I, I prove it every year, producing high yields and less pest. Instead of planting a bunch of, in a block, boom, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, collards, intertwine your plants in, in between. Plant some dill, plant some rosemary, some basil, plant the sternums, plant marigolds everywhere. Not only does it provide a benefit to your garden when it comes to pest, companion planting, it also adds beauty. And why not take a look out at our garden and know that that is our beautiful refuge that can fill our bellies with good food, all right? Tasty goodies. So thank you for joining me on this long video about companion planting. I hope you've learned something and you can take that back to your garden. I hope it inspires you to have a trap crop maybe you get a benefit of some another harvest if it makes it. Um, that pulls the thread away. You also have um, the attracting crop, like bringing your pollinators, um, keeping things away. You also have your repellent, like your dill, rosemary, and sage. That keeps things away. Don't forget about your aphids, what they look like. If you see them, here's another picture. This is what they look like if they're on your leaf, underneath. Take a look underneath. Always look underneath your leaf. You can't see this. This is underneath your ground. So if you take care of your soil, you know, you know that you won't have that root rot, okay? So thank you for joining me on this video about companion planting here at Fitzgerald Garden of Goodies, where we're in the sunshine room until it gets warm. I can't wait to bring you outside into the garden. So thank you. And if you're on Facebook, please join us at Fitzgerald Garden of Goodies. It's a group of us gardeners just having fun, chit-chatting about pros, cons, goods, bads, success, not so success, but we're there for each other. So. This is Sheba signing out. Hope you enjoyed this long video. <laughs> I appreciate your time for watching, okay? Hope I inspired you to grow something too. Come get fresh. Mm -hmm.